Today on Better Book Clubs, Tim O'Brien's short story collection, The Things They Carried. I've made an argument that book clubs ought to think more often about choosing a short story collection to read together. And there's a whole other video on different ways you can go about doing that. But today I want to talk about a specific collection, Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. This book was published way back in 1990, and so it's been around for a long time, and it's considered maybe the most important book uh, written about Vietnam. It certainly was well received. It was a nominee for both the Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Critics Circle Award. But um, the thing that really recommends it in my mind is that my college students often talk about it as one of the few books that they really enjoyed in high school, that they really got a lot out of and they're enthusiastic in talking about it. So I want to share with you a couple of things about this book. It wasn't O'Brien's first book about Vietnam. Um, he published books back in the, a couple of books back in the 70s about his, or based on his experience as a soldier in Vietnam. But The Things They Carried is the one that's best known, the one of his books that's best known anyway. And it's a collection that is not uh, autobiographical, and yet it's very much based on O'Brien's experiences on the ground in Vietnam, as well as afterwards. So I just want to talk about a couple of the stories in this collection to give you a better sense of what it's like and whether you and your book club might enjoy reading it together. Sometimes collections of stories are really just that, collections of discrete individual stories all written by the same writer. But one of the things that I, I think makes the things they carried more interesting to talk about is the fact that all of the stories are very much linked together. So it's not a novel. It doesn't have that rising arc leading to a climax, but it is a bunch of stories that all kind of um, come together in a way. Um, there are recurring characters who appear again and again in some of these stories, and you do get a full sense of the book as a book at the end of it, and not that sense that you've just read a bunch of separate stories. So I wanna talk first just a little bit about the very first story in the collection, which happens to be the title story, The Things They Carried. And this book, this story is um, often anthologized. It's turned up in a lot of other places. It's often taught in high school and college. And it's working on the um, a literal accounting of the things that the soldiers carried and using those things as a way of teaching us who these men are and um, what they're thinking and kind of bringing up some larger, deeper, philosophical even issues about their experience as soldiers. So I just want to read one brief passage from the near, near the beginning of the story just to give you a sense of what O'Brien is up to here. He writes, the things they carried were largely determined by necessity. Among the necessities or near necessities were P-38 can openers, pocket knives, heat tabs, wristwatches, dog tags, mosquito repellent, chewing gum, candy, cigarettes, salt tablets, packets of Kool-Aid, lighters, matches, sewing kits, military payment certificates, sea rations, and two or three canteens of water. Together, these items weighed between 15 and 20 pounds, depending upon a man's habits or rate of metabolism. Henry Dobbins, who was a big man, carried extra rations. He was especially fond of canned peaches and heavy syrup over pound cake. Dave Jensen, who practiced field hygiene, carried a toothbrush, dental floss, and several hotel-sized bars of soap he'd stolen on R&R &R in Sydney, Australia. Ted Lavender, who was scared, carried tranquilizers until he was shot in the head outside the village of Tanke in mid-April. So that gives you just a little flavor for O'Brien's writing and the way in which he's using these items that the men carried. And of course, they're metaphorically carrying a great deal more with them. Another story from this collection that I've taught several times to my college students is called How to Tell a True War Story. And this gives you a sense for one of the things that O'Brien is up to in this collection, which is what might be called metafiction, where the fiction is about the fiction. And this story, How to Tell a True War Story, begins with the line, this is true, which almost immediately raises the question, is it true? I mean, 
the narrator is saying it's true, but in a way it makes you wonder whether he's saying it's true because he has to convince you that it's true because it's not true. So there's this whole play on um, what's true and what's um, how to talk about what's true and how to separate fiction from reality and whether it's even possible to do that. It raises all kinds of questions. Again, it's not just a straight story after story after story about literally what happened to a soldier in the war. I'm just going to read one other brief excerpt from How to Tell a True War Story to give you a sense of this. O'Brien writes, in many cases, a true war story cannot be believed. If you believe it, be skeptical. It's a question of credibility. Often the crazy stuff is true and the normal stuff isn't because the normal stuff is necessary to make you believe the truly incredible craziness. In other cases, you can't even tell a true war story. Sometimes it's just beyond telling. I think these are among the reasons why The Things They Carried has stood the test of time as one of the greatest novels to come out of the Vietnam War. It was a war in which we lost more than 58,000 American soldiers and many more citizens of Vietnam were killed in this war. And it's uh, obviously a really important part of our history. And O'Brien tells it uh, in a way that makes it so nuanced and slippery and kind of both accessible and inaccessible at the same time. It opens up all kinds of possibilities for interesting conversation about this really important uh, piece of 20th century American history. So if you're thinking about reading short fiction with your book club, The Things They Carried is a great place to start. I'll be back soon with another episode of Better Book Clubs. Thank you.